Yeah, I'm so, gonna let the members of the public in. Yeah. Okay, Michael Oman and Robert Sands. Robert Sands. Okay, so um, then let's get the meeting. Let's get the meeting started. Okay, I have, and, house, I have housekeeping rules to read. Randy. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting. Go old, ahead. The good old fun stuff here. So, uh, just a reminder. So, good evening, everyone. And uh, my name is Bobby Walthall, and I will be running the Zoom meeting tonight. So just a few reminders that the meeting is being broadcast and recorded on the City of Lawrence YouTube channel. The public chat function is disabled and all chats will go directly to me. When you are not participating in the meeting, please mute your microphone. When you are participating in the meeting, please keep your video on. When you're not participating in the meeting, please turn your video off. You will still be able to hear the meeting and then you can turn your video back on when you are participating. Turning your video off when you are not participating allows the active meeting participants to be seen on the screen. And if you have any trouble with this, please send me a chat. The city reserves the right to mute microphones and or turn off people's video to minimize distractions. Please remember to state your name every time you speak for the benefit of those listening remotely. If a motion is made, and seconded, please call on task force members individually to provide their vote, then announce whether the motion carried and the count of the vote. When the chair calls for the public comment on an item, individuals participating via Zoom should use the raise hand function to indicate they wish to speak. The raise hand function may appear in different places on your Zoom menu depending on the device you are using and which version of Zoom you have. Individuals will be called upon by name in the order they appear on the meeting host screen. When you are called on, please unmute and state your name. Comments will be limited to three minutes. When the chair calls for in-person public comment, individuals should raise their hand to indicate they wish to speak. Staff present will direct you to the podium to speak following social distancing and safety protocols. Please state your name before speaking. Comments will be limited to three minutes. And that is all the comments. Okay, um, thank you, Bobby. So first item on our agenda is um, approval of the minutes. Um, uh, can we have a motion? Are there any concerns about the minutes? Welcome, Craig. Um, are there any concerns about the minutes? No. Someone make a motion to approve the minutes. This is Ursula Minor. I move to approve the minutes. There a second. Jim Carpenter, second. It's been uh, moved, uh, John Nalbandian has been moved and seconded um, that Ursula Minor and Jim Carpenter that we approve the minutes of the April 19th meeting. Um, oh, I guess we have to go around the room as well. Ursula? Yes. Jim? The minutes. Yes. Uh, Hugh? Yes. Bird? Oh, you're muted, Bird. Um, yes. Uh, John Wilson? Yes. And Eileen? Yes. Okay, great. So that's um, minutes we've passed. Um, okay, the next item, uh, as I mentioned, as I wrote in my, um, in my memo to you that um, We've been talking uh, as if we have approved the um, the four the four year mayor who is directly elected, and uh, Bobby and I went through some of the minutes and uh, because I didn't recall actually having done that, although I think we've been operating on a consensus that that's what we wanted. So um, what I what I'd like to do is to have a vote on the four year term as mayor. But first I'd like to invite the public if they have any comment before we, well, actually, I guess we could introduce the motion and then have the public comment. So would, would somebody introduce the motion to uh, propose a four year term for the mayor? I so move. Burdett has moved to, John is there a second? John Wilson second. 
Hugh Carter has seconded. It's moved and seconded. Okay, so is there a member of the public who would like to speak to the mayor's term? Looks like we're okay, so. Oh, Robert, your hand is up. Robert Sands? Yes, yes, I was waiting for the chairman to call on me. Well, your hand oh, okay. is up. Okay, I didn't, I don't see that. Yeah, he's not showing up on my screen either. Who's okay. on my screen? <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Professor Loomis. Uh, Mr. Sands, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so uh, I just want to say real quick, I think uh, I think the direction that the committee's heading on, on these, uh, on all the topics is uh, promising, uh, specifically about the uh, four-year mayor um, issue that, you, that the motion is about. Um, I, I think, and I have no data to back this up, but I believe that there would be pretty wide acceptance in the city of a directly elected uh, four-year mayor. Uh, there's a couple issues that I want to make mention of that I hope the committee will take under consideration. Uh, these are these are topics that you all have already brought up, uh, but uh, making sure that that the uh, race is nonpartisan, meaning not belonging to a party. I, of course, I think you you've already talked about that, and I hope you talk about it in this sense. And then uh, one other issue that I'm not sure has been brought up quite as much is uh, the decision of the candidates to run as mayor. Uh, I think it was brought up once, maybe in the second meeting of instead of it being a all three, a, a slate of at-large candidates and the and the first two are mayor and vice mayor or whatever, but, but a candidate declaring, I am going to run for mayor at-large in the city for a four, for a four year yeah. term. Yeah, that's so, gonna, uh, Robert, that's gonna come up in the second, in our second, uh, second part of this this motion here okay all right so uh that's really all i had and uh i'm i'm excited to uh to watch the uh the deliberations okay are there any comments uh from the um from the yeah, yeah john, john i i just uh i'm i i, I made the, the motion i'm certainly i'm certainly for it it's only taken 20 years but uh uh the only question I would have, this is not, and it goes the it's it, obviously it's a nonpartisan term. Uh, we are not talking at, yet about uh, the mechanics of uh, electing a four year mayor, are we? Because I do think that we would want to talk about the question of whether we, what, what would trigger a primary, uh, do we want to do uh, rank choice voting uh, for mayor, which would be very straightforward. Uh, so this is just on the, the basic idea that we're going to have a four year mayor without talking about how that may directly elected four year term without going into the mechanics of how that election would work. Yes, uh, this is John Nelbandian. Yes, that's that's correct. And I was looking, um, as I said in my memo, I looked at our charge, and our charge is fairly is very clear. Uh, it's talking about the term of the mayor and um, whether the mayor would be voted at large or uh, by um, or by the com by the commission. So that those there are a lot of details, right? Right. Like. For example, when we're talking about roles and responsibilities, there are a lot of details that are going to be have to be hammered out, but they're not necessarily within the purview of of this task force. If we can if we can meet the primary goals of the task force and still have some time, then we can come back to some of these okay. things and and they become added value, I think. Any other any other comments? I just have one quick question, John. Um, after we vote on this particular item, I I do think it would be helpful if we filled the commission in on our discussion about the roles and responsibilities. So, are you picturing that that would be part of the memo that we create oh. for the commission? Is here's here's what we talked about in terms of roles and responsibilities. Here's what we discussed. Okay. 
Okay, so I had those down as um, the directly elected mayor will uh, will give a direct voice to people to the residents about who they want to be their mayor. That's the first thing. The second thing had to do with the four-year term would provide some continuity. And the third thing that I recall is that um, when we have a, an, an election that specific, people running specifically for mayor that uh, I think Professor Loomis brought up, we will have a campaign that is more issue, issue oriented. So I think those were the three things that stood out for me in this. And maybe we can get those into the into the minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we vote? All right, so I'm just gonna go around the horn and my horn is different from your horn, I'm sure. But let's start with Eileen Horn first. <laughs> well <laughs> played. <laughs> um, yes, I vote I. Uh, John Wilson? Yes. Burdett Loomis? Yes. Hugh Carter? Yes. Jim Carpenter? Yes. Ursula Minor? Yes. And John Nalbandian is yes. So great. So that passes. Next, uh, voting on the method of the election for mayor. And basically, we're trying to decide whether the mayor would be elected at large by the residents or whether would be um, elected from among the commissioners themselves. So um, is there any, any discussion before I invite a motion on that? When you say elected among the commissioners themselves, you mean they would be doing it technically the way they do it now? Yeah. Okay. So what we're voting on, John, is whether the intention is this directly elected mayor would be a separate category on the ballot. Yes. Or whether it would this person would be mixed in with the commissioners up for election and then the body, the commissioners yeah, themselves yeah, would yeah. name so an you mayor. Wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't actually run for mayor. Okay. Okay. Excuse me, this is Tony Wheeler, city attorney. I'd like to remind all of the task board members that in order to comply with the regulations set forth by the Attorney General, we have to announce our name and our position each time we speak for the benefit of people who may not have video, only audio. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tony. This is John Albandian, Chair. Um, so can we um, um, invite a motion? Robert's that... got his hand up again. What'd you say, Bird? Robert's got his hand up again. Oh, okay, Robert. This is Hugh Carter. I, I don't think it ever came down. Yeah, I guess not. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. sorry. Look, it, I, I'm not that great at Zoom. As okay. Jim can okay. okay. Any any discussion here? Okay, let's uh, then vote on the idea of a directly elected mayor at large. So um, let's start with Ursula again. You this is Ursula Minor, a member of the task force. I vote yes for a directly elected mayor. John, this is Bobby Walthall. I'm sorry, was there a motion made? No. Oh, not yet. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought Bird did that again. No, I was the first one. Okay. I'll make it again. All right. A, a okay. uh, directly elected at large mayor is my, uh, that we, yeah. that, we, that Lawrence would have a directly elected at-large mayor. Nonpartisan. Nonpartisan, yes. Thank you. Is there a second? John Wilson, I second that. Okay. Um, all those, all the, oh, I can't do all those in favor. Okay, so let's go around again. Um, Ursula, let's start with you. I'm Ursula Minor, a member of the task force. I vote yes for a directly elected mayor. Jim Carpenter. Jim Carpenter, yes. Hugh Carter. 
Hugh Carter, yes. Burdett Loomis? Burdett Loomis, yes. John Wilson? John Wilson, yes. And Eileen Horn? Eileen Horn, yes. And John Albandian, yes. Hey John, I've got one, one more question. Yeah. Could So we have, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven members of the task force. Um, would it be appropriate to ask the other members of the task force, even though they're not voting, to uh, uh, to to provide their their preferences, or do we just let it go? Uh, this is John Nalbandian. Uh, my my preference is to just let it go, uh, yeah. because in part we're running out of time. Uh, yeah. And and we need to focus on the on the the specifics of our task. So this the uh, next item here is to continue discussion of the mayor's roles and responsibilities. Now, in my uh, I'm concerned. I was concerned about how much time we're we are spending on this. Um, so as I said in my memo, I went to look at the um, charge of the, that the city commission gave to the task force. And um, while it does talk about length of term of the mayor and whether the mayor is directly elected at large and so on and so forth, it does not say anything about the roles and the responsibilities of the mayor. Now, there is a fourth charge, fourth item that says, in effect says, and other items as deemed important. Uh, and so what I'm thinking is, what I'd like to do is to find a way to move through this fairly quickly. <laughs> and we have the item of the mayor's role in the agenda and the mayor's role in council staff relations. Uh, Craig has weighed in, this, uh, weighed in on this. Um, very directly and with uh, and and with conviction that he's very concerned that the um, empowering the mayor in these ways actually takes away from the um, the the engagement of the commission as a whole uh, and runs contrary to uh, what. He, he, he says, um, and I have no reason to doubt, that are very effective current practices. And the current practice, Craig, please weigh in on this, but the current practice has, is that if all commissioners are invited to weigh in on the agenda um, before it is actually, actually prepared. A, a if we if we give the mayor this kind of power to more influence over the agenda, what Craig has reminded me is that uh, while an altruistic public minded mayor would might very well um, use this to the commission's advantage, someone who is very self-centered might in effect limit, uh, the involvement of the other commissioners in the agenda setting. And I don't think any of us would want that to happen. Similarly, on the communication between the staff and the council, I our commission, I am I'm going to go back to something that Eileen said in one of our previous meetings, that when she was working for the county, that department heads were encouraged to meet with the individual commissioners to talk about their interests, let them know a little bit about the department and, and sort of open a line of communication. So um, these two items that we have here, um, we have various uh, choices. I want Craig to weigh in on this and maybe Eileen as well, but um, I'm hoping that what we can do is either eliminate the choices or uh, just table this whole idea. 
uh, and get on to the district at large thing, which I think is more important, given that this is not one of the specific task force responsibilities. Oh, okay, that's my, <laughs> it's more than two cents, isn't it? Um, Craig, you wanna weigh in here? City Manager Craig Owens, um, you said it very well. You summarized it very well, and I know we're trying to move quickly on this. Um, and, and you've you've uh, did send the uh, comments that I made in writing out. Um, it's it, it simply the the process that we have now is really empowers the 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 whole commission uh, to not only see what is coming on the agenda. So staff kind of says these are major items that we're going to see you're going to see in the future. Um, so that they got a, they have a sense of when the time the timing of those and kind of the scale and scope and that things are coming maybe we don't know exactly when it's going to be and they can add to that ask for things to be added and um, you know so I think that's a very positive process we do a draft agenda that we send out to the commission uh, on a maybe a Wednesday I think Bobby knows this better than I do, a Wednesday. And um, so this is what we're thinking. It doesn't have any content other than the agenda titles. And then um, the commissioners can ask questions or add, subtract, be, you know, um, interact with staff before we then end up publishing the full agenda packet on Thursday. So um, it's a very interactive process, a lot of access. I think in the electronic age, it it's really allows for that um, and works really well. And, thank you. And um, Eileen, will you talk about your experience um, as a department head? Sure. I wanted to clarify my previous comment. I was always meeting with commissioners with the um, approval and invitation of the county administrator. So um, I think I think that's important distinction here is that in the form of government that we have, the role of the county administrator and the city manager is is critical, and they can do a, they can do a job of either being um, kind of a choke point in the system. You know, all information has to flow through them, or they can empower department heads um, to have those conversations with commissioners. And I think, you know, that's a that's a style a management style question. I don't think we need to dictate that or be explicit about that, but. You know, I think there is a lot of value in elected officials having access, especially to department heads, to to clarify um, if they have questions about agenda items or want to do a deeper dive into something. Um, but to your point earlier, I think what we probably could do is give like send a memo to the commissioners and say we talked about all these roles and responsibilities. And, you know, we think this group, like the ones we voted really easily on on the survey, like these seem like no brainers. And this category probably deserves future consideration. And I would put this item maybe in that bucket of the, you know, deserves additional consideration by staff and, and commissioners. This is John now Bandian. Uh, how, how did the rest of you um, respond to that idea? You. You. So I watched uh, last week's meeting um, and yeah, it was great discussion on all this. Uh, I, in fact, I kept trying to hit my mute button so I could chime in on it, um, but I'm glad to have the opportunity now. Um, my thought in listening to the discussion was um, on the two items that we've come down to anyway, uh, as far as the first point of contact, both of those items and the agenda is where we get into a little challenge is trying to formalize these things that really I think they're in there because traditionally, for instance, as mayor, you should know you're typically going to be the first point of contact. You're going to get called by the media probably, but that's not a rule. You're going to be the one that needs to show up and do a lot of this, that, and the other. Um, but those don't have to be rules. And when we try and formalize it, that's where we get into the problem of, gosh, what are, you know what I mean? Uh, and some of those challenges that I don't think that's what it meant was to cut off staff communication or anything. And so uh, th first I wanted to say that where I'm not sure we need to spend too much time on formalizing these things. This commission would probably work pretty quickly through the duties themselves, um, anything they want to formalize. And then a lot of it can go on tradition or style as well. Some mayors may be a little more for instance, the agenda that that in the past, you know, that was always one of the very few. I don't know if you'd call it a power, but it, you know, they got to uh, while they were just voted on by the commission, um, they still 
were able to appoint, but they had commissioners vote on that. And they were able to at least have the agenda meeting weekly where they're at the table with the city manager. And, you know, depending on the mayor, they may have more say than other mayors. That could be style and depending on the relationship with the city manager as well. So, I mean, I like what Craig's saying. It sounds like um, I, if we're directly electing a mayor, I, I want that mayor to be a little, little bit involved in, in the agenda or at least have say, but I would totally assume that, that that's a relationship thing, you know, and I would expect him to do that. Formalizing it, I think, is where, again, we start getting into some trouble and some unintended consequences. So I'm kind of, uh, to wrap it up, I'm, I'm with Eileen as well and just saying maybe we could kind of summarize some of our discussion or thoughts, but for the most part, I think they can pretty quickly hammer out duties. And frankly, that they could change that quickly and easily just among an agreement among themselves about any time, I think. Yeah. So that, thank you. How does that sound to the rest of you? I mean, I like that. Jim Carpenter. Uh, Jim Carpenter, Task Force member. I just want to piggyback on a couple of things you just mentioned, especially his comment about, you know, what the formal rule is and what the actual practice is. And we have, there are several things like that that take place now. And one of those, as he mentioned, was the mayor's power to recommend appointments to commissions and other such bodies, such as this one. Um, and in, the, so the rule is the mayor recommends, it goes on the agenda, they're supposed to have a discussion at the city commission meeting and then vote on it. The actual culture of the city commission is nobody ever objects to anyone that's recommended by the mayor. And whoever the mayor is, they always reappoint somebody that's still eligible for, a, for another term on a commission <coughs> or a task force. And that's just been the culture as long as I've been watching this for 20 years. Nothing. So... Yeah, the rule is one thing, but what they do is another. So when we start talking about other things, if we do eventually talk about roles or division of um, powers and responsibilities between commission members and the mayor, I hope we can keep some of those things in mind. Because if we're going to have a four-year mayor, what we're going to get is somebody that can, that's going to appoint without objection under the current practice of the city commission for four years and they can change every single task force. I mean, they will reappoint everybody within that time. Um, so th that's, and I'm just saying it because I was the only one who said no on that, <laughs> but, but this is why in some of this discussion. And otherwise, and, it, and the other second thing is having been on, you know, the planning commission for five years, um, what Craig has pointed out is essentially mimicked uh, on the planning commission, the chair and vice chair have an agenda meeting. We don't know what the actual reports are going to be, but we get the parameters of what the discussion is, what, what kind of public questions have come in, and it helps the chair prepare for the meeting and actually sometimes reorganize the agenda order depending on what type of public input is expected at the meeting because you don't want people sitting there for three hours uh, until their item comes up if they're the only agenda item that has public showing up for it. You want to move that up to the front and the city commission has that ability to do it as does the planning commission. Um, so there's just little things like that that are the practice and uh, on the planning commission we direct all, all our questions to the planning director. Um, well, or it's either Becky Pepper or Jeff, because they kind of share a role in there. And then um, they can respond to any commissioner. And as long as it doesn't you know, hit a certain number, uh, it doesn't have to be revealed. But people, uh, I'll guarantee if anybody sends in questions, it's going to be addressed in the staff report by the time it's presented at the meeting. So uh, I think there's a lot of me, Jim. Yeah. Excuse me, Jim. This is John Nelbandian. I think you're talking about things that are beyond our pur purview. No, I'm just I'm just trying to emphasize what Craig and build on what Craig and Hugh have said. That there's some things that 
that are taking place and will continue to have value. And I don't think, I agree, we don't need to actually talk about those now. Okay. We set those main things, but I know these are going to be further discussions. Okay. And, and I already know um, that, you know, when we turn in our report, one of the possibilities is the city commission could extend the task force with other questions for us to discuss and take uh, more public input on or actually have public meetings when we can. So I'm just saying, I agree with you, John, that we should just go forward, hit those direct requirements in our, by the city commission, uh, give responses to that and then see what else the city commission would like us to do if they want us to do anything else after that. So I just okay. wanted to throw those different things out. There. Okay, so this is John Nalbandian. So I'm going to propose that what we do is we look at this uh, roles and responsibilities as kind of an addendum to our recommendations. And uh, we do that in a way that is more of a discussion type of uh, presentation rather than this is what we agreed to, this is what we don't didn't agree to. Are we okay with that? Okay, so I don't think we actually need a motion a motion on that. So we'll just uh, we'll just move in that uh, move in that direction. John Ursula had her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Ursula. I don't. I can't oh. see people's hands. That's why. That's I'm, okay. Uh, I was actually. This is Ursula Minor, task force member. I was just going to agree with Eileen and Hugh and what Craig brought to the table, and that and actually we should just move on to what we're tasked with. So we could get through that and then we have time at the end we can add in all the other stuff okay okay Good. john this is bobby walthall again rob sands has his hand up i didn't know if you wanted to uh, allow public comment or not sure okay okay rob okay i didn't i just my question was if this was going to be a, a public uh, input item but if there's uh, no motion i'll just keep it short and say uh, I think the, the commentary has hit it on the head, so there's nothing more I can add. Thank you. John? Yes, uh, Bert? Bert. This is Bert and Loomis. Uh, I just wanted to, to I don't, I don't want to, I'm perfectly happy with everything we've talked about, but I, I, do, I do think that uh, Craig at some point wrote down the, an almost full-time mayor, as if that was uh, something implicit. And I, I, I've never thought that was what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do think that somewhere along the line, we're gonna, we need to, just a directly elected mayor is one thing. And maybe one, we just wanna let the commission decide what kind of a role this, person who was a, a a member of the commission should have but but is you know is there uh in terms of salary in terms of having some staff stuff stuff like stuff like that and uh, i think the directly elected is one thing but then the nature of the mayoralty uh i don't know if that's in our purview or 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 or, or, or not Clearly, that person is a member of the commission, and then maybe we just say the commission de will determine those sorts of things. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. This is John now, the Indian. I agree. Uh, so uh, then, uh, can we move on uh, then to the uh, district at large question? You okay with that? Give me a nod. Oh, we can't nod heads. I'm sorry. Uh, stay Just go in, ahead. Will you nod your head? No, no, <laughs> no. Okay, so um, uh, I want to start by showing you where the uh, where the commissioners have resided over the past the ones who have been elected over the past decade, where they reside, okay? So that we can see is, you know, is it skewed towards one area or the other? 
and I don't know about you all, but to me that, you, you know, the idea of, of seeing clusters of interests, clusters of this or that, lends credence to the idea of districts. Um, and there are other reasons for districts as well. But here we have, Bonnie is showing, or Bobby is showing us that this is where the, um, let's see, let me do this. I need to do this. Okay, so um, I hope you can see the whole, the whole uh, screen here because in mine, it kind of, uh, uh, I couldn't see the, the east side. But you can see here um, that uh, if, you, if you look at the river, and you see up where it says Bismarck Grove in the top right, and just to the left of that, you can see the river. Yeah, thank you, Bobby. And the river's turning, and where the river turns, and then think of just drawing a straight line down from that, and that's Massachusetts Street. Okay, now if you go up, can you see on the left, it says Billings over here on the, yeah, draw a horizontal across that. Okay, so can you get an idea of where you know where things where things fall. So I think um, okay. Well, I'll keep my I'll keep my observations uh, to myself. Of course, I think the idea of east of Massachusetts. I I think we know there's you know we talk about east west. Um, east of Massachusetts, though would not have enough people to constitute constitute a district. If you, I don't think, if you move from Massachusetts Street over to the next big street uh, up and down, I think that would be over here a little more, but yeah, right there. I think that would be Iowa. So if you think of Iowa Street up and down, and then Bob Billings east and west, then you can get an idea of the distribution. Okay, are there, John Nelbandian, um, let's see, I wanna go back to my screen where I see people now. Uh, Comments on that visual? Yeah, Eileen? Yeah, Eileen Horn, uh, task force member. I just wanted to point out that um, while it looks like there isn't enough representation, maybe if you just quickly looked at it south and east, I just want to gut check and maybe confirm this, that there hasn't been much residential development in those areas. Those are primarily industrial and commercial, right? That's where the business parks are and, and such. So I just wanted to like gut check that and maybe highlight that, that it could look at first glance that we don't have enough Southeast representation, but residential development in that area, that is an area of growth for the city, but I'd be curious to see like an overlay of population, if that makes sense. Yeah, and we can you, do You can't that. live on the fairgrounds or at the jail or in the business park. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and we can do that too. Um, there's census data, I mean, we can break it down. These are broken down by census blocks, and and we can do that. Um, we it can was do just that. a comment. I don't, I don't want to add work. I just wanted to point that out. That at first glance, yeah. it could look like this whole part of town is being ignored. But I'm curious about the housing density, the actual residential housing density. I don't think there's yes. much. other comments. Uh, you muted, Bert. This is Redette Loomis. Um, I, uh, where am I? Now I can't even see myself. Uh, we can see you. Okay. Uh, so we did get that population distribution. Was it today in the or in in the packet in the, in the email? And so I was sort of doing that in my head. 
the commission members over the population dis, dis, distribution. And I think Elaine's point is, is, is broadly, broadly uh, correct. Um, the, but, but I also think that this would get into the whole question of, of the nature of representation. And I think pretty clearly there are people who have not lived on the East Side who have more or less been perceived as representing the East Side. So I, I'm, that's, that's the quandary I have with, with, with geography in, in, a town like, in, a, in a town like Lawrence that, that uh, I, I, I understand what uh, Bonnie was talking about with, with these clusters. Uh, when you do redistricting, we call them communities of interest, but uh, it's not clear to me that residence is a is somehow a uh, a good predictor necessarily of uh, of uh, representational style on the commission. Thank you, Bert. Other John Nalbandian here. Other other thoughts on either this of uh, the graphic or other uh, other information that you've come across that you want to uh, bring to our attention. This is John Wilson, committee member. Um, I, I would say, Bird, your comments really resonate with me. I mean, I, I think I don't want to paint any area of the city with any broad brushstrokes of political ideology, but with where I live, not on the east side, I'm sure there's a lot of overlap in, in philosophy with um, the east side of town. And so I think that your observation is, uh, speaks to me. Uh, Hugh Carter here. I, I also just going back to uh, Dustin Stumbling Bear's comments at the last meeting um, of all the canvassing he did. And, and I know for a fact he did do all that. <laughs> um, so when you've got everybody feeling like you know, other, everybody else has more, at least that is a pretty consistent indicator that it's probably some, you know, pretty fair representation out there. If there's any area that has a, a stronger representation, I don't know that it's about the districts themselves. I think it's about that particular area coming out and showing up. Um, and that will probably always be the case and rightfully so. So, um, so anyway, that's my thoughts. John, this is Bobby Walthall. I think Robert Sands has his hand up again. Uh, go ahead, Robert. I I didn't know if we're taking public comment on this item or not. Uh, well, let's let's just wait until we um, until we get uh, through the through the commissioners. Okay. Um, other well, other comments. Craig, you, you've worked with districts um, in it. You said, I think everywhere that you've been the city managers, there's there've been districts. Um, have, have the districts been drawn in those places? Um, I mean, how do you how do you how do you think those districts were drawn? I mean, did they really represent differences in the community? Or were they just done for greater access, maybe for residents. City Manager Craig Owens. Uh, well, most of them, well, they were all in place for many decades. Uh, so I was there through some adjustments that were required to be considered every once in a while. Um, but in general, um, they, they did have, you know, they were compact and not spread out and um, usually had some kind of a, an edge or a boundary that was a main area uh, uh, that kept, kept the compact nature and the contiguity of, of neighborhoods uh, in mind. Okay. Other, um, other thoughts here? Hey, uh, yeah, I want to present this one more time. So if, if we, as a task force, uh, don't feel strongly, could this go, could we sort of 
provide some basic information and then send this forward to the commission because uh, it's going to be the commission who would decide decide correct on what would go to the to the voters what kind of changes would be made is is that right <clears throat> Uh, this is John Nalbandi, and I think that is right, Bert. And and we would not be tasked with uh, draw. You know, part of our mission here right. is not to draw the district, right. but just right. to say whether they make sense, make sense or not. I think we could also look at the argument that districts, even if you couldn't draw districts to distinguish like interests um, that districts might provide more access to residents, um, that there might be an elected official who you know runs uh, represents the districts who would spend more time with uh, residents of the district, uh, meetings, neighborhood meetings, so on so on and so forth. And I, I could see that as uh, being uh, of, some, of some benefit. Bird, can you weigh in on that one? So my, my immediate question there is, um, would a candidate have to live in the district that he or she represents? Uh, and I say that uh, because I think that recruiting people to run for the city commission is, is not an easy task. And so if you have uh, district by district requ requirements, uh, that may well uh, prevent talent, uh, a talented person uh, from saying, oh, so-and-so already represents my district. Uh, number one, I can't run against in that district for at least two more years. Um, and, and, and so it, it's not as if we have congressional districts where you've got uh, 800,000, 700,000 people, although you don't get the best people in those districts either. But I, I, I'm, I am worried about someone who wanted to run, but that, that district uh, would already be taken and maybe well represent, but the, the person could do a good job on the, on the commission. And I think that's what you see now. People never have to think about where they live. Uh, they can decide whether they want to run for the commission or not. And that that opens up the town pool. Um, the opposite argument is that you might get some people in districts who wouldn't ordinarily run, yeah. and that might produce uh, uh, somewhat greater diversity on on the on the commission. So as I've said, with all these representational issues, uh, they're pretty thorny. Uh, and I don't think we're, we can easily come down on, on one side or another. Eileen. Thanks, Bobby. This is Eileen Horn, task force member. I, I just wanted to piggyback on what Burdette was saying. I was, I mean, let's say, let's do the thought experiment. We come up with four districts and you would hope to have a competitive race in each of those districts so you know at least two hopefully three candidates so you're trying to recruit 12 people for for city commission and i'm i wonder historically how whether that has been achievable it seems like as britta is saying it's sometimes really hard to talk folks into public service um so that was one thought i had um also i think the um i think that could have a potential to invite some new new candidates and some fresh ideas. And I think that's intriguing. What I'm a little bit worried about um, is that we might be thinking about like ease of management for that elected official in terms of my district is only 25,000 people. And so I can handle that. And, but, but on the flip side, then it allows you to kind of segment and say, well, that's not my issue because it didn't happen in my district. And I, and I don't think, I don't think that serves us very well. I mean, we, 
um, and John can speak to this too, like that happens in Topeka where you can say, this is my district's issue. And, um, and like, not think about the whole. I think some people in Topeka do a good job of thinking about the whole state, but it, it does create a certain um, feedback loop in your mind about, as an elected official about boundaries and what's in and what's out. And I'm not sure that that's helpful at the city level. So those are my two thoughts. Jim Carpenter. Uh, Jim Carpenter, task force member. <clears throat> I think if it goes to districts, it would actually make it easier for people to run, some people to run. It's daunting to think about how you as one person are gonna cover um, the entire city of Lawrence in a campaign. And most of what you cover, unless you're Dustin Stumbling Bear that's able to put in almost all day long every day for months, um, you can't get to that many houses. You're depending on door hangers and mailers and things like that. So it, it would make it a little easier for people to jump into the race. On a side note, I know that there, I know of several occasions that people have actually moved to be in a particular district to run for office, um, not for city level, but for county and, and to represent us in Topeka. Um, so I don't see that as a, as a huge hindrance also, we have not discussed the possibility of having a combination of districts and at large. Um, so we would have that. I don't, I don't think, I think what it would do is you would have commissioners that have a better awareness of some of the issues in a particular district. They would bring that to the table, but the nature of our city commission, everyone has to be involved in the budget. Everyone has to be involved in overall land use planning um, when they're on the city commission. There are so many items that bring you together rather than push you apart, but it has the potential of providing perspectives to that greater discussion that are sometimes lost now that are dependent on um, the public to have the time to study it and actually show up, which in itself those of you that have showed up in front of a commission <laughs> meeting to speak, how intimidating that is. It might make it easier if there's somebody there that you actually know up on the dais. So I think there's a lot to be said for them, but I think you know, it, it, there's a lot to be said for tempering it also with perhaps having some at-large members on as well. Plus, we're talking about a directly elected mayor that's going to be chairing the meetings, which I think we know one of the hopes of that position is to focus people on the whole, on, on the issues of the entire community. So we, I, and I, I had to go back to what Dustin said, you know, or I don't know who said it. After about four months on the commission, you come in with certain ideas and then you start to learn what your real role is and you start to see the whole picture, but where you're from actually tempers your input into the discussion and the final decision. So I think there's a lot to be said for that. So I'd, I'd like to possibly explore a combination of that large in districts. And I know we have to have at least four districts if we go that way. So we're talking about expanding the commission to keep an odd number if the mayor is a voting member, which I think we've already decided they would be, so. Ursula. Um, I'm also leaning toward, I think the at-large and having districts is good. You'd have representation from districts and you'd have a little bit of both. Um, I do agree with, um, it would bring, it could possibly bring more people forward that did wanna run. Someone had brought up that, you know, when you run for a commissioner, you represent the whole city, but if you, represented a district, there may be some voices in those areas that really, you know, would come forward and run. We may end up with more people running and um, that person would be closer to the issues in that district. You have a couple, you know, a couple of at-large people, they would just, you know, represent everything. So it's just my opinion. 
So you like uh, the John Nalbandian, so you like the combo, uh, yes. Ursula? Yes. I like uh, this John Nalbandian. I, I really don't know where I fall on the, where I fall on this. I mean, I'm so used to at large, at large, and um, and I know that as an at large candidate, and Hugh, uh, maybe you can weigh in on this as well, uh, that I felt an obligation to be responsive to anyone who anywhere in town that I didn't represent a group of people. I didn't represent, you know, um, an, an area, an area of town. And that in fact, uh, if we have some at large representation, it gives residents or groups, they can go not only to their district rep, but they can go to the at large as well. So they have more options, especially if, uh, like who was saying, was it Bird who was saying, if you, you know, you, you, you and you and your district rep don't get along, or, or isn't inclined to uh, agree with, agree with you. Hugh, how, what do you, what do you, what do you think? Sure, thanks, John. I I agree with what you said there, but like uh, most things on this discussion, I I kind of see both sides as well, and so I'm a little bit. Uh, to use Burdett's word, a little bit agnostic on on the, uh, it's a little daunting, the thought of districts and us getting a recommendation together fairly soon is my, a little hesitation on that. Um, but uh, to your point, you know, even if you do districts, I do think you still have that same, we well, still have the same responsibility of, of looking at, you know, at the whole city, because very seldom are you going to be voting on an issue that is really very specific to just your district. I mean, most of the business in front of the commission is about the interests of the city of Lawrence in general. So you're still going to have to, you know, everyone still has to have that same mentality of being accessible to the entire city and thinking about the entire city. But you probably do. And, and to Eileen's point earlier, again, I see both sides of that, because when you initially said it, Eileen, I said, exactly. I mean, I'm always trying to drum up candidates and I'm not talking chamber candidates, just good people get in and run. Um, but at the same time, if there's just districts and you just have a district, I think you're never going to have a problem with having two or three people, you know, three, four step up. If someone else isn't, because then you're like, there's going to be a lot of people who may never run otherwise, who would go ahead and say, hey, I, I got a shot if I'm dealing with just my area here. So I can see how it does create a little bit more diversity um, as well. And so, but again, my hesitation is, um, you know, if the commission was really interested in going that direction, I think we need maybe some more time. As you said, there's not a lot of good um, uh, academic uh, studies out there for us and whatnot. And, and really the, the, the expertise level varies on the committee, but I don't, I don't know if many of us feel like we're, we're experts when it comes to this particular uh, issue. So we're going to need some, I feel like quite a bit more time if we're going to go down the road of districts how many and um, you know, oh, make the case. Okay. Well, actually, I think we do have an expert. I think uh, Professor Loomis is an expert in this area. And I think, uh, Bird, correct me, uh, but I think he's he basically says, as I read his stuff, uh, there's costs and benefits, uh, regardless of which system or combination there are going to be, you know, uh, they're going to be positive. Well, not neg necessarily negatives, but there's going to be pros and cons. And there's no correct, no correct answer. Uh, Bert, is, did I characterize that okay? Yeah, that, that that's 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 fair enough. But but I, I do think that the, I really think the discussion is is good. Uh, and as someone who's always pretty much supported at large. And felt that this is still a small enough town where everybody, uh, five people in the commission or six people or six commissioners plus a, a mayor, um, you can have access to those people. It's not that difficult. But I'm also, I also want to have you consider 
the possibility, uh, if, we, if we go to districts, of just doing districts. Uh, because if we, if we go to, if we, I think that it, there's always this temptation to have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Uh, but if you have, as Bonnie pointed out last time, I, or somebody did, that if you have four districts plus two at large, the four districts are around 25,000 people. If you have six commissioners, and I really want to go to three and three, every two years you elect three. If you have three and three plus an elective mayor, who as Arlene pointed out, and we talked about last time would vote, so you have seven votes. Uh, now you're down to 17,000 people uh, per district. Uh, so that's a, that's a more man, that's smaller than a, a state legislative district. Uh, uh, it would be smaller geographically. So I, you know, I, part of me says if you go to districts, take the full plunge, uh, and and uh, have have somewhat smaller districts. I do think that means the resources for individual candidates to run that that it would be less daunting. That how much money they'd have to raise how much of the door knocking you'd have to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, think, I think that trying to, to, to slice the, the baby in half may not be the best uh, alternative here if we want to go, if we want to go, uh, if we want to go to, go to, go to districts. Now, the only, the final thing I'd say, as I read the population figures that you sent around today or yesterday, uh, districts are going to be weighed heavily west of Iowa. And, uh, you know, it, I think when people see where the district, and then you can't, there's no way around that. If you want to have compact districts, if, you know, that's where the population is. So I think people may, you know, wonder, you know, be careful what you wish for. So that goes back to my agnostic uh, feeling. But, I, you know, uh, I think 17,000 people roughly per district, uh, 16,000, somewhere in there, uh, you know, that that does put you individual commissioners closer to the people and may encourage uh, a, a wider range of folks to, to, to run. So there are some real positives there from my perspective. Eileen. Thanks, Bobby. This is Eileen Horn, task force member. I just wanted to, I, I like, I see where we're going with let's do at large and district together so we can have the best of both. But I was thinking about the voter experience. Imagine what your ballot looks like in that scenario. And if we have a hard enough time educating folks about the process and that, that just seems like that could make it even harder for the voter engagement goal that we have and the transparency around elections and you know, if you don't, if you can't tell as you're driving around town which signs are for you, it, it could be really hard. Um, so, just a just a thought in terms of the voter experience. Jim. Jim Carpenter, task force member. I I just want to add one more thing that's been related to me by more than one city commissioner over the years, is the difficulty of sitting on a commission with people that you've been have been slinging mud at you or, or you at them and suddenly you're supposed to come together and work together um, for the city issues and there have been commissioners that have, that have wondered if maybe districts would be better because it could cut down on some of that and allow the the commissioners to actually i didn't have to run against you i didn't have to criticize you now we're, now we're together we might have different opinions based on who we represent, but at least we didn't chew each other up on the campaign trail. And it takes a while to get over that. And so I just want to throw that in as another consideration that I know that's not my experience. That's what commissioners have related to me as their experience over the years. <clears throat> John Nalbandi, and other thoughts? Uh, Hugh Carter, John, sorry, I didn't see other hands up, but um, 
I just thought I'd mention, but while I'm kind of agnostic as well, I, I do like the idea um, that Burdett had suggested, you know, if we went with the, the districts of just making all the commissioners, um, you know, districts with the, the mayor being the at large, that uh, tie breaking vote. Even though I also voted for the mayor, uh, I should point out on that survey, I initially had said they only vote in a tie. Um, but after hearing that discussion last week as well, I, I totally agree with them voting on everything as well. So um, they're not just a tiebreaker, but, you know, them being at large and six commissioners has merit. I, I Six districts anyway. Ursula Minor um, member, after I listened to what Burdett said, I tend to agree too. that made it make more sense with six commissioners and the breakdown of people. So. Sorry, Hugh Carter again, but I'll also say, I, I see also the uh, six districts. I mean, that's a lot and it's a lot of different campaigns, uh, you know, and, and signage and all that stuff too. So there, there's uh, there's a lot to, to consider there. But I, I, I guess what I'm saying is if, whether we went districts or at large, um, I kind of agree with, rather than trying to mix it up among the commissioners between districts and at large, we either go districts with commissioners or we go at large and the mayor always being at large. I have a Ryan? question, John. Oh, oh, thanks. Eileen Horn, task force member. This is maybe a silly question and probably not possible, but could we just like experiment with this for a couple of elections? <laughs> could we like write that in somehow that we're going to try it out, see if it fits, and then we'll go back? Because it, it feels like if we could, I know it's a wishful thinking, but if we could be kind of experimental about this, then we could um, we could see if it works and and then go back to at large if it doesn't. But I don't know. Just a thought. <laughs> uh, this is John now, Bandian. What we could do is provide maps uh, with different demographic variables being plotted uh, geographically. So so we could actually see if there are, you know, where is the minority population? Is is there a cluster of a minority population? Is there a cluster of, I don't know what the other variables? The problem, there's one, I might have spoken to that about this last time. There, there is some logic to trying to look at districts in terms of income levels. Uh, and the differences there, but that becomes very complicated in university communities because the census census data, I've been looking at this, and what it does when it considers income and average income and levels of poverty uh, in college towns, uh, if you're living in a dormitory, you are not you are not included. But if you're off campus, you are included. And so what happens is that levels of poverty, officially levels of poverty, at least in the three university cities that I looked at, were dramatically greater than it is in places like the suburbs of a uh, of Johnson County. But we can provide, I, I think we can provide different different maps so that we can see those kinds of things. And that might be, Eileen, that might be the testing out. This is city manager Craig Owens. And if I may, I and it's only complicating it, which isn't well, well not the direction. <laughs> But it, I also wanted to share that I've worked in cities where there are two members per district. So um, you could imagine you would get your six and three wards or three districts. Um, and I found the advantages there that you do have some partnership that develops with those two candidates who are typically on different election cycles. Um, so just to throw that as something that hadn't been talked about yet and that I've had experience with.
Okay, how about we uh, hear from uh, any of the public now? Um, <clears throat> uh, Robert, are you uh, are you still available? You're muted if you're if you're talking. I hate to overlook it. I know he's interested in this subject. Robert, I'll try again. Robert, are you there? Oh, I'm talking louder. That doesn't make a difference, does it? <laughs> uh, Robert, are you still with us? Yes. Did I go oh. mute again? Okay. Would you would you like to weigh in here? Yes. Yes, I would. Please. Uh, so Eileen alluded to this a little bit already, um, but uh, I understand that there's there's kind of the discussion and, and inevitably everybody goes to the uh, gamisms of, of what happens in four districts or three districts or six. Um, but what I think is critical is looking at going back and looking at your the values that, that the committee adopted or the task force adopted and and saying does districts. Uh, address more or less of these than at large. So I, I would say that first. Uh, all the points, and I, it's already been brought up, but whichever method is used, there's going to be a lot of pros and a lot of cons. Um, I personally think the pros of going to districts outweigh the cons for all the reasons that have already been brought up. Um, let me think what else was covered. I don't know. So much ground was covered. I, I I can't really remember all the points I wanted to bring up in my three minutes. So I'll just stop there. Thank you. Okay. Um, so um, I think we can bring this. I'm feeling like bringing this to a close. And the way I would do that is to propose that um, I've been taking notes. And what I, I hope, <laughs> I can, uh, I'll prepare those notes and send them out. And uh, maybe we can get, uh, maybe that'll stimulate more, more thinking about these kinds of things. Uh, maybe, actually, maybe I can, uh, uh, who wants to help? On, let me. That's a good way. Who wants to help on this? Uh, Bird, would you would you weigh in on this? Yeah, I I I I, I will. Uh, but I, I I'm I'm likely not to want to uh, overcomplicate things and and make um, oh. and 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 make uh, yeah. Uh, Try to draw distinctions where there may not be very great differences, uh, and I and I do think you need to to I, I mean I, I the more I think about it and, and I still I'm I'm not I can live with almost any system here and I don't think it will make that much difference honestly, uh, but part of me really is is going not to to the to six districts not because of demographic differences, which I think we're going to have a hard time parsing yeah. out, but rather uh, a smaller number of people who will have uh, uh, th their point of, number one, their point of contact, and number two, the possibility that more uh, people would, would, would come forward to run in smaller districts rather than having to, to run uh, city, city, citywide. Um, uh, now, I, I, just as I felt all along that sometimes when city commissioners run for office, they appear to be representing a particular interest, um, whether that's true or not, it's another matter. But with rare exceptions, um, they adopt a, a, a pretty broad view of the city very soon. I really think that people, if we had six commissioners from districts, 
that they would pay attention to their district, but they would sure they they live in Lawrence. They they do stuff all over the community. They understand the community as a whole. It's not like you're talking about Rhode Island and Alaska and Mississippi. So I I, I I'm not too worried about them being especially paro parochial. Um, so I, you know I, I'm happy to engage this, John. Um, but uh, you know I I don't think that in the end I think some of us we'll just have to kind of go with, with with our guts a little bit rather than say, oh, here's the evidence that demonstrates X or Y uh, or, or, or Z. And for me, that might be simply that you've got smaller districts of 16 or 17,000 people that may have some benefits. I'd love to see you go up for tenure with that attitude. I did. <laughs> <laughs> you did. <laughs> that's uh, that's funny. Um, how about how about we just go around or around the table and just get some idea of how you're feeling about this this issue uh, now and the no commitments. Uh, so we need to think about this a little more, but um, we just find out where we are on this. That sound all right? Uh, I'll go first, um, John Nalbandian, and I I like the idea of the six districts, and I I I think uh, you know I Eileen has raised another good point, which is whatever the commission decides it doesn't mean it can't be changed at some time in the future. And I, so I, I don't think we're, you know, we're, we're making a change, but it, it's not irreversible at some point. Okay, who wants to go next? Um, Eileen? Thanks, John. Eileen Horn. Um, I, I don't know where I stand on this. I'm really, I'm really torn. Um, but I think Rob had a really interesting idea of if we went back to the goal statement and then we use that as a filter, I found Bonnie's um, literature re review or that annotated bibliography that she created really helpful. And, but I didn't have a lot of time to like really dig into it. I wonder if we could kind of go back to that resource and use the filter of the goals to think about this in terms of which of the two systems do we think helps helps us meet those goals. Um, that, that could be potentially a really rich conversation next time and might move us a little bit closer. Cause I'm, I, uh, I don't really believe in horoscopes, but I'm a Gemini. And so I can like, see both sides of this really easily. <laughs> okay. Who's next? Uh, Hugh Carter. I, I guess I'll go next. Um, yeah, I tend to agree with Eileen as well, because I, I am definitely uh, torn. Um, and I don't know if it's six districts or five, but, um, you know, districts versus at large. Again, I, the only thing I feel somewhat strongly about, at least at this point, is that I feel like we should go districts or not districts and then have the mayor, of course, being at large. Um, but I do think I agree that looking at the values, I feel like what's holding me back from going districts is really just the daunting um, you know, task of uh, how good a recommendation we can really put forward without a, gr a great deal of academic research behind it. Um, but at the same time, if we're looking at the values as our guidance, um, I think there is at least some pretty clear uh, information out there about um, whether districts to, you know, going back to the values that we decided, I think we're gonna find those point us to districts anyway. Um, so, not to get too far ahead of myself, but I'd like to do that because if we have at least something that points us in, in that direction, then, then I'll feel better about it than just going on a pure gut, so. Ursula Minor, um, district member. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards the six commissioners with smaller groups of people, but more information couldn't hurt either. So I'll just sit, leave it at that.
let's see, uh, Jim Carpenter, task force member. Yeah, I'm also leaning towards I like the six district ideas. I understand. Um, I agree with Burdett Loomis that probably we're going to have more districts where the population is. But to me, <clears throat> I'm still seeing districts that we have voices actually on the commission that people listen to because I know more than one time <clears throat> that one voice can change the entire tenor of a conversation in ways that don't happen otherwise. And, and I don't have scientific research for it, <clears throat> but it's, it's just kind of based on experience with, especially with the yeah. Well, this is John Nalbandian, and I, and I think what the bibliographies, you know, we have Kim Nelson's bibliography and we had, we have Bonnie's and, you know, there's just, there's not a slew of evidence, especially when it comes to evaluating the impact of districts versus at large. Um, I mean, without, you know, they're all conditional. They're all conditional. Under these circumstances, this works better. Under these circumstances, this works better. So um, what we have, we don't have another meeting. Well, wait, John, I, I get to weigh in one for a second, even though yeah. I've talked a lot. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stunned at myself that I've, I've, I've sort of gone to the sixth district thing. Uh, I had, had no expectations that's where I was going. Uh, but uh, all I would say is as we read those studies, the summary of studies, uh, methodologically, uh, this is the social scientist speaking, even when there are findings, a lot of these are very, very modest, and as John points out, conditional. So, you know, I'm, I'm, it's hard for me to take too many of them uh, really to the bank, especially since there, there's, a, there's a substantial mix. So it's worth reading. I, I'm not saying that, but uh, we're doing this for Lawrence, Kansas. We all have been involved in Lawrence, Kansas for a long time. We have a sense of the community in various ways. Um, and I do think that, that going back to the values of uh, great idea um, and trying to think of where we are vis-a-vis uh, -vis those, those, those values. Okay, this is John. Um, Eileen, you want to uh, introduce us to your, uh, <laughs> your friend? Yeah, this is my office assistant, Bowie. He's three and a half. You want to say hi, Bo? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Hello. Say hi. <laughs> Look at all those people waving at you. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'll, uh, I'll try to turn into uh, turn into an academic here and uh, try to uh, try to synthesize what we've what we've uh, what we've done, and then hopefully next week, uh, next week, next month, May seventeenth, um, we can actually come to some recommendation. And I don't, you know, I, I don't know, I don't think, I think we're gonna, you know, our recommendations are gonna require a commentary as well. So, so uh, you know, we'll be able to explain uh, some of the logic here and uh, some of the uncertainty. Uh, let's see, do we have anything Anything else? Is there any um, any other comment on this topic? Any other uh, public comment? Okay, then I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Hugh Carter, so moved. Second. Ursula Minor, second. Okay been moved and seconded to adjourn the meeting. So um, let's start with Loomis. Bird, vote. Uh, yes. Okay. Bird, 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 Bird,
Eileen Horn, yes. Uh, Hugh? Hugh Carter, yes. Jim? Jim Carpenter, yes. And Ursula? Ursula Minor, yes. And John Nalbandian, yes. So, uh, Bobby, thank you very much for, uh, for the slide and for all your help. And yeah. so um, I'll, I'll work on something and get it to you. And then uh, we'll see where we go from there, huh? Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Good night, everyone. Bye, boys.